Andy, it seems a common assumption among uh, technologists, uh, futurists, that uh, to upload our first person consciousness to non-biological media is a, um, an in principle given. It's a question of, it's an engineering problem. It's a question of when we'll do it, not if. Some people say decades, although that seems wildly optimistic, but n nobody doubts that within a few hundred years that would be conceivable. To me, that's not intuitively obvious. Uh, you've studied consciousness in your career. You've looked at very sophisticated areas of embodied cognition, extended mind, uh, predictive brains. When, when you look from your background of understanding what consciousness is and things it does, is it in principle possible so that your first person consciousness can be uploaded to where you will feel, in a sense, no different than you do now? Yeah, there's something in the setup there that makes me uncomfortable. And it's, <laughs> What's it's, what I try to do? <laughs> it's something about the notion of consciousness being something that I've got here that I might sort of, or that might be, pushed over there somewhere, yeah. kind of uploaded somewhere. Yeah. The, I guess the place that I would want to start is by thinking of my consciousness, myself, as a pattern of some kind, a sort of pattern in information space, if you like. If you think of yourself not as, if you like, a sort of a, a locus of this special thing, my consciousness, but if you think of your consciousness as a, as a pattern of some sort, then of course the notion of uploading it doesn't seem outlandish, although the upload itself would be kind of weird, because what you'd be after is just reproducing that pattern. So it wouldn't be really sort of pushing it there like it's down yeah, a tube. Yeah. Right, right, right. So there's a, a nice little thought experiment uh, that originated with Dan Dennett, and uh, it's called Death or Transport. I'll describe it very briefly. Um, what happens here is uh, in some near future, or perhaps it's a far future, there's a technology so that you can get into uh, a cubicle in one location. Your body is scanned. The information about how everything's organized is then transmitted to a distant location. An effect of the scanning process is that the original body is uh, destroyed. So all that matter is now turned into dust of some kind. At the distant location, the, the pattern of, uh, of stuff is put back together in the same kind of way and something gets out. Something that looks like you and sounds like you gets out at the other end. Dan's question was, is this death or is it transport? Would you get in there? Would you think that was a way of getting from A to B safely or not? So you can take that to the next step, which means that if it worked and that Andy Clark out there said, oh, it worked, yep. uh, then I said, oh, that's nice. I, and I, because I stored the information. I mean, I, I yeah. had the information to transmit, so I have the information yeah. in some source. I'd do that again. Yeah, you could. And then do it again and again. Yeah. So now I have a multiplicity of Andy Clarks all yeah. saying, you know, that worked and now I'm here. Yeah. But then each one of you would be shocked to see one of the others. That's... That's true. I mean, I might be less shocked than some people to see the others, <laughs> yeah, if you see what I mean. Right. Um, and some people would be outraged. So, you know, if you, were, if you were, I don't know, John Searle here or something, then you'd just be outraged because these others are just pretending to even have consciousness, let alone be R you. Right, right. Um, or possibly they are. Maybe it depends what you made them of, I guess. So, um, uh, but, but there is a yeah. thing that is to be, that, that is your internal... Yeah consciousness right now. There is a thing to be that. I can feel myself being that. Good. Okay, and if yeah. we go into this multiplicity, yeah. you know, w what happens, that even though every one of these will claim it, will any of them be it? I think that's a very funny question. I mean, so for example, suppose that we just froze you temporarily, completely somehow, so there was no yeah. neuronal activity right. whatsoever, right. and had the ability to bring you back again. Right. Um, I think most of us would be fairly happy with that. Right. Most and of us would think that a little interruption in the pattern that is me doesn't right. stop yeah. it being. Well, we have a general a anesthesia, or yeah. dentistry, or colonoscopy. It's a I bit mean, like we, that. We all, yeah. we all go through that. I mean, when you yeah. get it, you're out. But and I'm then, thinking, yeah. But then there's still sort of subterranean processing and stuff I mean, going yeah, on. But, but your I'm consciousness to get rid of is out. Like, but your consciousness is. Yeah, and then it comes back, and yeah. I know it's the yeah. same me from before. I feel that. Yeah. I feel there's a qualitative yeah. difference in terms of uh, uh, uploading it in, 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 mm. in, in an in, in a informational form yeah. that, that is, it becomes in a, in a, in a different locus, mm -hmm. even well, if it's exactly if we, the same. Well, if we are patterns in information space, then the locus 
isn't Do, doesn't um, yes yeah, so the locus I isn't an essential property right, right. of Eunice right um, I don't actually know how to resolve this question though so at this point someone with other intuitions someone with the more sort of me here now animal intuition is just going to be led to think about the world in very different ways to the way that I think about it. I think one of the implications of thinking about persons as patterns is that all these questions about personal identity don't seem so all or nothing. So there's a nice, um, there's a nice uh, uh, science fiction series on British TV called Black Mirror and one of the, the stories there was a, a sort of near future in which um, our social media records have become so detailed and so, um, so intelligent, if you like, mm. that the social media could start putting out stuff <laughs> as if you yeah. were putting it out right. after your biological demise. Right. Of course, if right. you think you're a pattern in information space, that might actually be a way of persisting in some sort of um, shallower version of yourself. Mm. And if you had enough of a pattern there, I'd have to say that just is you. Mm. So be, it's because of this sort of almost metaphysical presupposition that I've got that we're patterns in information space that notions like uploading don't seem that difficult. But, but I don't know how to resolve this question. How do we know if we're a pattern in information space or a pattern in um, meat space? Okay, if, if, you, if, you give, if I give you that we're a, a pattern in information in information space um, and you have ten versions of yourself which are exactly at this microsecond equal. Okay. From then on they would, they, would, yeah. they would differentiate, but at yeah. that moment each one claiming to be you, um, you wouldn't say there's a, a fractionalized consciousness that you're all part of the same consciousness, I don't oh, think. I see where you go. Yeah. Uh, uh, or nice. you wouldn't say one is real and one is not real. So you, 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 you'd have these ten separate centers. Yeah. But yeah. right now, you, you don't feel ten separate centers. You feel like one. So would you be one of those ten? Or, 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 I, or it's an irrelevant question? I have to say that I would be all of them. I would be all of those ten. But not, it's not that, as it were, there'd be one consciousness it, it, which it wouldn't is be all of those It wouldn't ten. be fused. Um, so every consciousness there. I think, I think consciousness exists at the, at the meeting point of perception and action. So for each of those creatures, there's a sort of meeting point for perception and action, and their consciousness is constructed in that, in that meeting. So that's why I don't think it's like a cloud that suddenly has all ten of us in. Right, okay. Um, but, but there are ten me's. Now each of the ten are going to assume that they are the original that got into the uh, transport device and will be shocked to see that there are others. Yes, that's right. So. Um, certainly, if there were ten locations, that would be true. Even if there's one location, uh, the one that gets out at that end will be shocked that the one, the, the meaty thing that got in the other end that they were expecting will be destroyed is nonetheless still in existence. Well, they, they, um, would, they would think that it's, uh, uh, that, um, that the one that they're seeing back there is so, some sort of an imposter because they knew they got into it. That's their memory. They got in and they're now here. Uh, and then they see somebody else there, they'll, they, they won't give credibility to I'm that. I'm not sure about that. Remember, they got into this knowingly. So that's to say you're, yeah, you're yeah. already the kind of person that thinks that you're a pattern in information space. Or you Otherwise, have, you it. wouldn't have got did, in in course, the first place. Right, right, so that means right. that when they get out the other end, yeah. if it turns out the machine's malfunctioned and the meaty thing is still in the first cubicle, they are going to think, oh dear, now I'm in two places because I'm a pattern in information space. The original version of me is still there. I didn't expect it to be. We're going to have to come to some kind of amicable arrangement about things here. It's just possible that, in fact, suppose there were 10 of these. It doesn't matter how many you have that they would come to think that um, some sort of priority should be given <laughs> to the original <laughs> meat version that, uh, that got into the scanner. Uh, maybe that's the one that should get the car or, or something <laughs> like that. Uh, there'd be, you know, I, I, th I think if you think of yourself as a pattern in information space, you'll think these are the kind of issue that we'll ultimately need to learn how to resolve. And, and you would be willing, assuming it were proven but in various forms, to give it a shot yourself?
I would want to share everything with the others, actually, because I believe that I am all of the others. Mm. So in that sense, I guess I would... Uh, but I would but we're not talking about a fractionalized consciousness. Yeah. We're not talking about a, 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 a split personality where in yeah. your brain you have 10, ten different and, locations yeah. and movement. Each one is a, a total yeah. independent uh, uh, yeah. consciousness, just like we, we are today. Yeah. Um, but still, I'm, I'm torn by this, this fact that, that you have in your your mind this inner sense of who you are and your and your um radical distinction from everything else from every person yeah. from every object you have that inner sense that's right um and uh, where would that go would it go to all of them yeah well not it wouldn't be shared among them all but they would each have that sense that they are um a locus of consciousness, and they no, would no, be sure, right sure. to have that sense no, sure, because sure each they, of them is a locus. Sure, they of would, but but the, the original that walked into that machine yeah. would that have disappeared? The, the one, the the, the the meat that walked into the yeah. the machine itself. Yes. Well, currently we're assuming it didn't disappear, right? Um, uh, 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 whether it. it did or didn't disappear? Yeah. It, it's the sa same question. It's easier if it if it um, uh, if it didn't I see disappear. Yeah. Right. Right. So now you're heading towards thinking it's death. I think you're heading towards thinking that. Yeah, yeah, um, no. Because the there's this sort of persisting locus through time, and once that's gone, even if a, uh, the pattern reemerges, it's not quite you that's reemerged. But I think the right sort of considerations to bring to bear there are considerations about how you would feel if your pattern was temporarily interrupted, as by. Um, being put into sort of deep refrigeration, or perhaps even during during deep sleep. So the way I would look at it is that, that my relationship to those others would be as it would to a, a twin brother, an identical twin, mm -hmm. uh, where we have the same DNA, but totally different people. Well, this would be a really, really, really identical <laughs> yeah, twin, if right. you see what I mean. Not, we don't have experience of, of, of mm. stuff like this because there are differences between those twins and from the, sure, from sure. the get-go, of, of course, their, right, their, right, right. their life histories diverge. Um, and, but the life histories of all the ten would begin diverging instantly. They will, they will, you know, in, in, in ten years' time, they'll be... Um, what do you think the likelihood of this different. actually occurring uh, it will be, given enough time? I don't see this technology, I don't see anything like Dan's death or transport technology in the next hundred years, and I wouldn't like to look further. Um, no, what I do think we're going to see are more and more technologies for preserving elements of the patterns that I would think of as us. So, for example, in sort of social media and in other, other possible forms. And we'll have to confront this question. Um, to what extent are very are the thickest versions of those preservations hmm. um, actually sort of versions of, of us or not? Is this a little tiptoeing into the sort of realm of virtual immortality <laughs> or virtual <laughs> regeneration? Or is it just, you know, just like a few lines left over in a notebook after we've died? 